We're only a few days away till Starfield's early access and official launch date. We have new information revealed by Pete Hines during an interview, as well as what Todd Howard mentioned regarding the new game plus. Then we'll end with the more intriguing details about the game from senior level designer Zachary Wilson. If you're new to this channel and is interested in Starfield content, please go ahead and leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell notification button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Without any further ado, let's get started. We'll start with the interview with Pete Hines. He provided some profound details on what we can expect from the game as well as some pointers on how to progress. The first key thing he mentioned is that the game doesn't really start until after the main quest. What does he mean? Remember in the first gameplay reveal they showcased space magic? Maybe we'll get that at the end of the main quest. I speculate there may be multiple abilities once you obtain space magic and could use in future replays. Just my guess. Let me know what you think of this in the comments down below. He also says that Starfield is his favorite Bethesda main quest as well as his favorite Bethesda story ending. That's very interesting. He also mentioned he once accidentally got stuck into the vacuum of space because he boarded the enemy ship and the pilot took off. That's actually hilarious, but it's cool that this could actually happen. He mentions there will be multiple passive points of interest across the galaxy to find. An example he gave was a set of farms where people give resources to people on other planets. From the sounds of this, as you fly around and discover planets, you'll get notification from the locals that may want to give you a quest similar to the scientists in the science outpost shown in the Starfield Direct. He also says certain companions will be annoyed if you do bad things, even companions who are really close to you. This means if you steal or pick locks, certain companions may not agree with those actions. So my next question is, is it possible for a companion to disassociate themselves from you if you do those things too much? I'm curious. I've never played a Bethesda game before, but has companions ever disassociated from you in previous games? You guys let me know in the comments down below. He also mentioned that there are lots of settlements with their own people and quests to find outside of the major cities. So that's interesting. Initially, people thought that the game would be barren with the 1000 procedurally generated planets. But based on this, if the quests are also procedurally generated, you may run into people further out in the outskirts that may also keep things interesting as you play the game. He was then asked if you can fly from planet to planet. He says that he doesn't know if you can fly from planet to planet as grab drives are much quicker and only takes a few seconds. I personally think there is no EVA outside of ships. He just doesn't want to say it to protect the game. But they did show zero G gameplay within stations and ships. But I don't think you can do that outside in space. I think you'll die instantly or over time if you venture into space. If I'm wrong, then EVA could just be one of those unannounced features they want us to discover on our own. You guys let me know in the comments down below if you think we'll be able to EVA outside into space. He then spoke about weapons and mods and said weapon mods combined with skills are really diverse. He said that he felt like Iron Man at some point. He then touched up on bounties and said that there are ways to get your bounties removed. So that's going to be really interesting. He then spoke on a museum at New Atlantis and explained that the lore of the game, the colony wars and what happened on Earth etc could be found at the museum. This is pretty cool to hear. I'll be heading to Earth to find out what happened to it. I'm wondering if the artifact has something to do with it. I'm curious to find out. He then recommended that boost pack skill is really important and fun as well. It allows you to travel planets much quicker. So get it. <laughs> he also mentioned that the Adoran fan cannot be a robot as somebody did ask if you can change the Adoran fan and he said no he's just an NPC. You can't change who an NPC is. He also mentioned that there are enormous amounts of creatures and he has no clue how many there are in the game. That is interesting. So I'd like to see a diverse amount of biomes as well as fauna and flora so that will keep things interesting as you go out to explore especially further out into space also he has no clue how long it will take to complete 100 percent of the game he says after 150 hours he isn't even slightly close to completing it 
They then touched up on mods and says that there will be mod support after the launch. They will allow you to add planets, stories, quests, and more. So that's going to be really interesting. What's going to make this game huge and allow people to play it for a prolonged period of time is the fact that modders will be able to add their own spin to the game making it fresh and new each and every time so that's one of the things i'm really looking forward to seeing he then touched up on mission boards he says mission boards can ask you to build outposts on planets that is really cool i think these kinds of missions will be the way we'll be introduced to the mechanics of the game a side mission or a main quest to build an outpost for someone would be a great way to learn the mechanics that's going to be really cool furthermore about the mission board he says you'll be able to pick the ones that you're interested in and they are in some way side quests expound upon an example of a simple quest in which he utilized a trade route to complete the example he uses is that a planet is looking for a specific resource he then said you can build an outpost that has that resource mine it then have a ship carry it to the planet that is actually really cool you can set up automation lines pertaining to trading as well as crafting that is a really cool mechanic that i'm going to be interested in doing myself in the game another example he mentioned is he had people on a planet colony that needed to go to mars he mentioned he left the game session to do something in real life he came back and started to do something completely different in the game came back to that same ship and found the two people still there on the ship where he remembered that he forgot to take them to Mars. He then paused what he was doing to take those folks to Mars a few systems away, then runs into the Crimson Fleet, fought them off, then realized that one of them had a unique item he needed to craft something he wanted. That's something really cool to do. Can't wait to get my hands on. He then mentions that there are lots of Easter eggs in the game. They did show an example of this in one of the earlier reveals where we saw a crash rover on Mars. I bet lots of people will go to Mars to look for that rover and derelicts of other space missions. He then mentioned that he doesn't think there are level caps. If this is true, then we can max out all skills, but we'll have to see when we get our hands on the game. He then mentioned starter guides are going to be coming out, but he doesn't know when. And also mentioned that people that are playing the game earlier on PC are getting really good performance. They touched up on ships and he mentioned that ships have tiers which require certain pilot skills. So my question is, can you board and claim a higher tier ship? And how is that going to work? Will you be able to claim it, then leave the ship there because you don't have the necessary skills to fly it? Or do you need a companion with you that has the required skills to be able to fly it? I'm curious to find out how this is going to work. He then mentions that the game has a slow burn. You can't do very much at the start. The game opens up slowly. That's interesting. They then spoke about crafting and looting. He says you can craft weapons and spacesuits with unique effects. That's going to be interesting. I'm almost certain that you're going to have to look for the really rare resources to be able to craft the really unique spacesuits and weapons. That's going to be cool to do. When out in combat, you can loot spacesuits, helmets, and weapons of enemies. That's something I would expect from a game like this. He also mentions to make sure that we pick boost packing as a skill, he said. The boost packing skill will allow you to traverse planets a lot quicker. He then mentions you have to spend the time to work on the skills to be the character you want to be. If you want to fly a higher tier ship, you have to fly more. And if you want to use certain higher tier guns, you got to use that gun type more. It's easy to be drawn by another quest or element of the game due to the size of the game and the variety of things you could do. When you level up, you need to be careful in what skill you pick because you'll need to use it in order to level that skill up. Very, very interesting timbits here provided by P. Hines. Moving on to what Todd Howard said in his GQ interview. He mentioned that the new game plus is another way to incentivize repeat playthrough for players. Todd says that it gives you the flexibility and options to carve out a unique identity and even adds a unique and exciting twist on the new game plus to incentivize continued and repeat play. That is interesting. So this is what's going to allow Starfield to be a game where people can be playing it for 10 years and more. 
So this is very interesting. Last but not least, the interview with Zachary Wilson, a senior level designer on Starfield. Zachary revealed that he won't share his favorite encounter in the game until after the release to keep it a surprise for players. But one thing he did share features a hapless tour guide leading a bunch of exciting townies out for a space tour and are excited to meet a real captain. He claims that the dialogue is hilarious. He then mentions that there are legendary ship encounters. These are huge, high level enemy ships that will dramatically outclass the player through the early parts of the game that you have to build up to be able to destroy. What I'm curious about is disabling it and being able to board it and claim that ship to add it to your fleet. I hope we'll be able to do that. He says he also really likes their derelict ships. He built a bunch of handcrafted derelict ships that focus on the tragedies and perils of space travel that players can explore and discover the stories behind. Later in the interview, he expressed that one of his favorite moments was the first time he got in a ship at New Atlantis, took off into space, found another ship and attacked and boarded it, stole it and flew away all in one playthrough without cheat or a console command. He says moments like that are electrifying when suddenly you can say to yourself, I think this might actually work. He was then asked, do you have a favorite aspect, quest, character, moment, theme of the game you're currently working on so far? He responded with, there's a moment early in the United Colonies quest line where we introduce a specific creature that's pretty cinematic. I think people are going to enjoy that and a classic sci-fi reference it points to. He elaborated and says, we also have a number of space encounters that are the kind of things you would only find in a Bethesda game. I won't spoil anything. If you liked anything in this video, make sure to hit the like button. And if you 